scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Oh, may God help you believe this thing I'm teaching. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must spend time praying for your life. It's good to intercede. I've taught you on intercession. It's good to pray for people, but there are times you have to honestly zoom the attention on you and your destiny and invest time, generate energy, praying for your life and praying for your destiny. Apostle, but I thought you were praying for me. I will continue to pray for you as a man of God. But even Jesus is praying for you. Even for those who are suffering, he's interceding for them too. If you don't take responsibility over your destiny and pray till you tear off the gates. Listen, especially for those of you, if you come from a background where you know that you are the first to do what you are about to do, you are the one who breaks the iron gate. You better pray. You better pray. Grandfather tried it and died. Grandmother tried it and died siblings tried it and died now you are the one that iron gate has never been broken you must pray the one who is grandfather or grandmother at least open part of the gate is just for him to finish opening it that one's life is easier for you there is a chain on it and there is a spirit holding the chain lord i will not fail in life days become weeks weeks become months what are you doing? I am praying. You are just lazying around. Don't call prayer lazying around. There is vision and purpose connected to it. Somebody say, I will pray. pray. One more time, say, I will pray. pray. Matthew chapter 4, please, from verse 1. This is Jesus preparing to begin his ministry. Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, the Bible says. Next verse. When he had what? fasted 40 days and 40 nights you would think that because he was jesus he had already listen look at jesus he discovered already his place he was determined to fulfill it he had spent time getting knowledge from age 12 he was in the temple and you would think just because he had acquired knowledge it was over the bible says he prayed and fasted 40 days and 40 nights and not even hunger stopped him I don't know any great man I may be wrong I'm learning too but I don't know any great man especially in the kingdom and in ministry who cannot point seasons of his life where he fasted the kind of fast that even the devil will look with shock and say ah this person you have energy and it's easier to fast when you have not made it yet that's why it's good to because all the distractions are less how much do you have that temptation will come you you focus and fast yes sir whether you fasted or not you were not even going to eat very well after all so you you use the opportunity you are praying giving yourself an excuse are we together mark chapter 1 please mark chapter 1 from verse 35 mark chapter 1 35 this was Jesus after a busy day. He had started ministry. So we see him praying. 
even before ministry would start now ministry started already and he was doing so well morning till night busy schedules and the bible says in the morning rising up a great while everybody said discipline he went out and departed into a solitary place and there there prayed you must pray there are forces that will try to fight you from starting if they cannot succeed they will be waiting for you at the gate of honor so that they will bring you shame don't you think because you started the devil will fold his arms the bible said he left jesus for a season every great man here listen let me tell you if you think because you are great and everything is working everything is fine think again go and ask there is a skill that maintains greatness one of it is the consistent fortification of yourself with prayer people are praying for you but you must pray for yourself because when satan sees that you are high up there he will begin to scheme things to make sure because he knows that in your coming down is the coming down of many so instead of attacking two million people he will attack you there are battles that you have no business fighting but when you become great is a battle that must involve you please obtain grace to pray everybody say i will pray apostle thank god me i'm not in ministry i'm just in business pray more the king of tyre is sitting where you are there that is his headquarters have you heard about tyre and sedon tyre and sidon you must pray the devil will not commit millions and billions to your hands when he knows that your heart is already inclined to the kingdom now go and ask people who practice occultism before they become wealthy they come under all kinds of oaths oaths with blood incisions to say listen these are the do's and don'ts as far as using this money is concerned you can there are wealthy people today who cannot give you more than ten thousand they are not greedy it is based on the oath that brought that wealth to the point that even their physical parents or siblings can be in the hospital deathbed but they are not allowed to bring that money you think they are greedy it is the condition that was given to them that's why the bible says the blessing of the lord make it rich and adds no sorrow are we together spend time praying first thessalonians chapter 3 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 second thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2 finally brethren pray for us that the word of the lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you verse 2 and that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith do not assume that just because everybody is laughing at or laughing with you they mean you well this is a world that is full of wickedness the bible says this world is a habitation of cruelty are we together why must this family be rising why must this man of god be rising why must this sister be rising why must this politician be rising why must this career person be rising look at jesus innocently bringing glory to the father and a few people came together and said look we have to do something about this man he's stealing our show oh but prayer is powerful you can get into that control room and begin to make things he said has thou commanded thy morning please obtain grace to pray for your destiny in the name of Jesus invest time praying invest time praying invest time praying don't pray out of fear pray as a not just as a principle of survival but your prayer will give room for you to keep making progress number five are you ready is God helping us tonight let's hurry up number five embrace a life of competence and excellence point number five you want to actualize destiny 
you must embrace a life of competence and excellence three scriptures very quickly proverbs 22 29 popular scripture embrace a life of competence and excellence it says seest thou a man diligent in his business leaves you with an assurance he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before average ordinary or mean men you want to rise beyond the average in life and destiny for the sake of the kingdom you must be diligent a diligent preacher will be a great preacher a diligent businessman will be a great businessman a diligent politician will be a great politician everybody say competence what is competence mastery we just finished a series on striving for mastery listen to it again you must become a master at something otherwise shame and reproach will always be within the corridor of your destiny make up your mind that you are not given the assignment of being and knowing everything but as far as the things that pertain to the area of your call and destiny is concerned please hold it with mastery and take away shame from your life genesis chapter 41 we'll jump the verses because of time give us verse 14 and then we'll jump to 29 down to 33 and then 37 we're jumping we're examining the life of joseph ready 14 then pharaoh sent and called joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto pharaoh to 29 now 29 to 33 behold there come seven years of plenty he's interpreting the king's dream now throughout all the land of egypt we're reading to 33 uh-huh next verse and there shall arise after them seven years of famine and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of egypt and the famine shall consume the land 31 and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following for it shall be very grievous two more verses and for that the dream was doubled unto pharaoh twice it is because the thing is established by god and god will shortly bring it to pass the last verse and then we'll jump to 37 now therefore look at him bringing a solution now let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Next verse. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Next verse. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou. May that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ that we will search and search and honestly come to the conclusion that you are truly exceptional that we will say your kind is rare in the name of jesus christ next verse please and pharaoh okay thou shall be over my house and according unto my word shall all my people be ruled look at instant honor that came because of competence and excellence it says only in the throne will i be greater than thou next verse we are reading to 46 and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt and pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and made him ruler over all the land of egypt three more verses and pharaoh said to joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of egypt look at this and pharaoh called joseph's name zavnath pania and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Last verse. 
and Joseph was how old? Wow. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before the king of Egypt. When they put the ring, when Joseph began to do exploits at a national level, he was 30 years old. That means there is no excuse. And for those of you who are saying, ah, 30 years, okay, that's old. What of Joash, who was king at age eight? Josiah, king at age nine. They were all kings, as small as they were. A child is not just a child in age. A child is a child in knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. You must embrace a life of competence and excellence two more number six am i right on that number six be disciplined and focused this is a big one i can spend the entire night dealing with this issue of discipline and focus there is no glorious destiny for any man and any woman that will compromise on the power of discipline and focus Isaiah chapter 50, please. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Let's hurry up, media. 50 and verse 7, Isaiah. For the Lord will help me, therefore I shall not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. He's given an impression that if you make up your mind that you are a soldier, then you have to adopt the, the discipline of a military man. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing also that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside say lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with patience the race that is set before us there are two things he says to lay aside sin and weight you can lay aside sin and not lay aside weight weight is anything that is unnecessary as far as the journey is concerned there are many good things in your life you must be able to cut away from you don't have to cut away from evil things alone there are many good things that are not profitable for your destiny are we together yes sir there are many good things you are going to have to say no to for the sake of where you are going Many good things that you have to say no to. Number seven, and that will lead me into a very important subtopic, and then we'll pray. Are you ready? The seventh point, if you want to actualize destiny, you must develop endurance. You must develop endurance. I will define for you what endurance is you must develop endurance are you ready i define endurance as the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus endurance the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus endurance the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus this one key here dear people of god if you have six over seven and this is the key you failed you will still abort destiny strangely james chapter one james chapter one from verse two and three james chapter one from verse two and three my brethren he says count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this verse 3 that the trying of your faith 
walk it patience in fact let's read verse 4 it says but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing everybody say endurance there are two reasons i have seen why people generally in spite of the fact that they walk in keeping with these other keys while they are unable to really maximize destiny and become all that god has ordained them to be number one is excuses they will always give excuses and you see to one who is determined to find a reason not to rise you will always find one excuses and then number two the second reason is violating the law of process i want to end my teaching tonight by teaching us something about the law of process please open up your heart and open your spirit because for some of you this will be an answer right now to your prayer are you ready to pray one more time lord open my eyes yet again open my eyes for the sake of my destiny for the sake of all those who are looking up to me make sure you are praying those following online azaria family and those connecting across the globe make sure your heart is open pray let it be from the depth of your heart open my eyes hallelujah write this down as a subtopic the law of process I need to teach you this very quickly mark chapter 4 please mark chapter 4 many great people from verse 26 have aborted destiny because they do not understand this mystery of the kingdom called process and he said so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground next verse next verse Miss let's walk together and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not how 28 now for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself but how does it happen first the blade is it in your bible then the air after that the full corn in the air we're reading to 32 but when the fruit is brought forth immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come 30 and he said whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of god or with what comparison shall we compare it it is like the grain of mustard seed which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth last verse but when it is sown it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it i had the privilege of learning this deep law of destiny very early in life the law of process write this down please everyone you must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God you must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God Deuteronomy chapter 8 we're looking at scriptures from verse 11 you must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God there is nobody who will taste of genuine kingdom honor as far as destiny and the kingdom is concerned until and unless you are tested and you are proven we we'll begin our reading from verse 11 beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command you this day less when thou hast eaten and art full and art built goodly houses and dwell therein and when thy herds and flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied 14 
then thy heart shall be lifted up this is why god needs to test and prove people it's a tendency in the heart of all men without exception and forget the lord thy god which brought thee forth out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage 15. who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents scorpions drought where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint 16. it says who fed thee let's read 16 together ready one to read who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not why that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to what end to do thee good at thy latter end let me tell you sincerely god tests people god proves people even men prove people before they lift them there is no responsible man there is no responsible leader there is no responsible father who will not test and prove people to ascertain their capacity and their capabilities before lifting them and even their tendencies you must be tested and psalm 66 verse 12 psalm 66 and verse 12 thou hast caused men to ride over our heads <laughs> we went through fire and through water but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place but before we got there you caused men to ride over our heads we went through fire and we went through water which one is better fire or water <laughs> Are we together it's like saying which one is better to die by shooting or to die by an arrow all of them will cause something to your body and you will still die you cause men to ride over our heads we went through water and through fire but the same you brought us into a wealthy place process is very powerful there will always be seasons in a man's life where God will be proving you to prune every tendency that can destroy and abort your glorious future and let me tell you the truth that is about the hardest face in the life of a believer because at those points I taught you this already that is when you experience what we call the silence of God you will live in the silence of God once and again and if you do not understand that you are being proven you will waste that season and you will find out that the destiny that was prophesied over you would never even come to pass number two the second thing you have to know about process is that it takes time for true success and your destiny to manifest no matter how you hurry destiny it takes time for true success and it takes time for destiny to manifest hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. i want us to read it in concert when we see it displayed everyone ready please look up one to read and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise the he being abraham and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise what does process do in your life i want to give you about four or so reasons and then we'll end it and pray for tonight about four or five reasons are you ready number one why do i have to go through process with god number one process tests your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny process will test your loyalty and your commitment not just to god your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny are you that determined 
to make it process will test and even prune your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny Luke chapter 9 please and verse 62 Luke 9 62 and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God process no matter what it takes that in the name of Jesus Christ I have set my face on the like a flint and I will push through it may be gradual but I must become that kingdom financier it may be gradual but I must become that man of God number two what does process achieve in your life process builds patience process builds patience James chapter 1, 2, and 3. We read that already. Please just write it down for sake of time. There are many people who it takes the discipline of process to bring them to a point where they can become patient in life. We live in a generation of impatience. Fast everything. We want it immediately. Sharp, sharp. And while it is true that God is a God of speed, there is a difference between speed and rush. God gives people speed after he has made them and built them but god does not rush people are we together isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2 very popular scripture it says fear not i have redeemed you i have called you by name thou art mine verse 2 i love verse 2 so much it says when thou passest through water i will be with you when thou passest through the river it shall not overflow you but when it gets to fire he didn't say where you pass where you run he said where you walk why do i need to walk through fire abba god it's enough that i'm there i thought i would rush out because that fire has an assignment to roast many things a way out of your life there are things water cannot remove <clears throat> there are things even the strength of the river cannot remove it will take fire and let me tell you when you are walking through that fire not even your tears will accelerate the pace you will walk slowly it will burn pride it will burn every kind of thing you will get to a point where when you get out of that fire you will be as light as a feather ready to fly some of you you are in that fire right now it is not always a demonic attack the anointing of the holy spirit was designed to fight satan not god so sometimes when you are praying and asking the anointing to fight and it's not fighting certain things it may be because it is not satan the anointing does not fight god process process you walk through fire three members six months two years three members you are angry you are offended you are saying even the people i raised now they have mega churches and god says stay i know what i'm doing when you walk through fire let me speak to someone here you may be in a season where you are fulfilling the law of process don't abort destiny obtain the grace to stay there is something that fire is doing and when it is done there is nobody who is a normal human being who will carry raw meat even if you go to the bush and you kill meat nobody will come to a restaurant just to sit down and start eating raw meat you just share a raw cow and people are just eating no it will pass through fire when you get to the kitchen in any restaurant it is hot there is no kitchen that is cold because that is where food is prepared did you hear me there is no kitchen in any restaurant that is cold the signature of any kitchen even if you are blind you will know you are in the kitchen because of fire several things on fire and while it is on fire the chef is laughing and those who need to eat they are waiting impatiently and they do not know that is fire that is responsible for their satisfaction fire they place that meat there they turn it they turn it back again they add something and turn it again 
and while that is happening something else is in the pot cooking and boiling and the man is laughing and it starts to change shape others change color others change texture many things happen under fire can i tell you nobody goes through fire and comes out the way you enter no no for some of you the fire will change your shape for some of you, the fire will change your color spiritually. For some of you, the fire will change your appetite. My encouragement is let the fire do its work. Let the fire do its work. Let the fire do its work. It may be painful. The fire may come as a temporal lack of finances. Let the fire do its work. The fire may be having several certificates and yet it does not seem to bring you anything. I'm telling you sometimes it's not the devil let the fire do its work there is good waiting for you at the end is someone learning number three so number one to test your loyalty and commitment to fulfilling your vision number two fire builds patience number three you know what fire does I mean you know what process does process helps you to appreciate the success of other people it appreciate it helps you to honor and appreciate successful people when you do not pass through fire and you don't have process you may not be able to appreciate the sacrifices and the results of others God allows us to pass through these seasons of process so that you would not downplay results when you see it can I tell you this? We live in a world where and you are watching people playing and the person misses the ball and the person is tired and breathing and you are watching and saying, just this guy would have just dribbled now. What is just dribbled and you would have just passed. And you do not know that your own match is waiting. Sooner or later, God puts you and in 10 minutes you are tired. He says, no, it's 90 minutes. Keep going. Are we together? It is easy to commend when you are standing outside and you are not the one actively involved. So a process helps us so that we can appreciate what successful people went through. Whether in ministry, listen, as I grow in ministry and as I grow in leadership, I'm cultivating a renewed regard and respect. I've always known this, but I'm knowing it even pragmatically. You know why many times when you are teaching in conferences, it's pastors you see crying in front and sometimes rolling on the ground because most of them are in the middle of those things. They were commentators before they started ministry. After 10 years, they came to the realization that you really need to know some things. How about many young people? It's easy to see our parents and those who have gone ahead of us and to mark their scripts and write all kinds of things and say, this is my father, I don't know where he was when all his colleagues were making it. Now you become a father and you are surprised you, are, you have BP because of his school fees of 50,000. And yet your father trained eight of you. We ate meat only on Sunday. You, they are about to throw you out of your house, you and your wife. At least your father was able to provide that. Let me tell you this. Do not commit to people who do not go through the law of process. They will not have an appreciation and a regard for others, especially for the great. Are we together? This is very, very powerful. A very deep and powerful mystery. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. This is Paul. In fact, if we had time, we would have read the entire span. But he was saying something here. When you begin to read from verse 20 down to 29, thereabout, he said, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting in cold and nakedness he was saying don't you think i just became an apostle by luck these were some of the things i went through you see when you see great people because of the way the palace would decorate you and perfume you you will not smell like the prison again but make no mistake it was from the prison you got there are we together now yes 
most people who criticize and most people who are involved in talking about people it is because they do not have track record of greatness let me tell you the truth when you go through the law of process you will appreciate great people with profound respect wow this man had to go through this to become a pilot this man had to go through this to become a chartered accountant this man had to go through this there are people who will not be able to pastor 100 members effectively the trouble of 100 members will depress them till they almost plunge into depression and yet you see a man leading a ministry of thousands of people and saying, all these people they are just lucky no sometimes God helps critics by giving them opportunities the way God helps critics is by giving them what you are criticizing God will give you as a gift or your take and then you will see it as a breakthrough and by yourself there are many people who can criticize am I not also anointed say for instance and God says okay let me give you open doors and you will preach for three months non-stop at the end of it you will sit down and you will search which topic have I not preached leadership i said it the other day oh i i preached that day on abraham i've preached about him and then you will now know the man who does three services or five services or preaches about eight sermons every day and he has done it for three or four decades without fail you now know that these people have something to say are we together my uncle is such a greedy man doesn't give anybody money no problem God helps you by giving you your first five million and as soon as that five million comes somebody will say please we need a surgery It's just three million we need otherwise somebody would die and I saw you in a vision and God said I should come and seek help that's when you will know that so it's not easy like that in the vision I saw someone giving you five million is that true sir you don't know whether you should lie or tell the truth now you know what it feels when you tell people just give me money anytime and they keep giving you let me tell you the truth until you are there just keep quiet let me repeat myself until you are there wearing the shoes just keep quiet hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you